data structure using C++ module 3 session 4 so previous class we had seen uh, how to search an element mm -hmm. search a word in a dictionary uh, using a method sorted chain which had operations find then uh, had insert and delete uh, now we will in this session we will talk uh, something about hashing why it is required uh, before that we will see what happens in probably a node if you are using sorted chain or if you are using a, a linear representation for searching an element in a dictionary then it requires time it kills time uh, for example if you are using a linear search method then if the total number of elements present in the list happens to be n assume you have thousand words in a dictionary and one word probably bird assume has to be found out in the dictionary so thousand iteration it will take not thousand iteration suppose if the word happens to be present at the last location z zebra something you are finding then definitely it takes uh, thousand iteration if not sometimes it might be late, uh, lower also but this method is not that effective to search an element then we have one more method which is binary search wherein uh, the total number of iterations or the total number of time taken to compute a element present in a list will be lower so it requires log n to the power base 2 number of iterations to find a element in a given dictionary now this is also not that better technique rather than that it's possible to effectively search an element using one iteration using a one iteration one time within less time you can find the key element and those two techniques are skip list and hashing skip list is not addressed in your syllabus hashing is defined in your syllabus next we will look at what is this big o of n and what is this big o of log n to the power base 2 this is actually the time taken and we call it as big o of n this is big o of log n to the power base 2 so that's for iteration so consider a situation over here wherein you have uh, eight number of elements present in a list and uh, we are indeed supposed to compute whether the element 80 is there in this list definitely 80 is observed and it is there at the last location for linear search it is not essential that you sort the element present in the list according to ascending order but for binary search it is required so for linear search how exactly this works 80 is actually your key element which you need to search so it starts begin um, directly beginning from the uh, position number 0 so position number 0 you have right now element 10 and your uh, key which you are gonna search is 80 so 10 is not matching with 80 so you need to change the index increment the index go to the next location compare that value with 80 uh, so that again is not correct so go back again go to the next location so follow the steps till you reach the element if it's not valid if you don't have that element again the time definitely kills because those many number of iteration has to be performed uh, so it is a wastage of time if you're using linear search suppose if you're having 10,000 number of words to be searched and one word one word you're searching 10,000 words you have so it takes it uh, degrades the performance so you need to uh, look for some other techniques so here it takes eight iterations to check whether 80 is available suppose if it was present at the first location then you would have caught it at the first iteration itself here you take worst case it takes an iteration similarly binary search it takes three iterations worst case it takes three iteration how three iteration so first let's assume now the key to be searched is 80 so first you need to sort the elements according to ascending order so all the elements in this list are sorted according to the ascending order so first we what we do is we check we take the first position start index and we uh, take the end index so first we perform start plus end divided by two so start plus end minus 1 it is 0 plus 7 divided by 2 comes out to be 3.5 we will take uh, the seal of this number uh, so it becomes 4 so it's not required that you take seal or you can take floor also sometimes uh, um, literally it will be considered as floor by default if not uh, you can take it as seal because integer we are taking we are grabbing the integer number so int of 3.5 is 3 right now we will use flow seal so that uh, mid value becomes 4 so 4 you have 50 50 will be compared with 80 and that number is uh, lower uh, 
key element is greater this number is lower so your search is this region this is the region where you are supposed to search or look for your key element so you have three more elements so next what we do after this the start index and end index would be changed uh, previous case it was 0 and uh, the end index was 7 now the start index is 5 and end index is 7 so you do 5 plus 7 divided by 2 you are gonna get 6 so mid value between this 2 range this range is 6 so this is the midpoint so there you check the value 70 is compared with 80 so 80 is greater so again you need to shift so you your starting and end will be now this this itself start will also be 7 end will also be 7 so 7 plus 7 divided by 2 you get 7 itself so indeed you are accessing this position so 80 is the element which is found at the location 7 and it requires three iterations now to compute or check whether the element is present in the list so this is uh, your method binary search now let's talk about hash table hash table you have ideal hashing uh, what is ideal hashing we will discuss this um, and what is hash table as addressed hash table takes less number of iterations to compute whether the element is present in the list or not so hash table uh, ideal hashing function so basically you will be searching a element key and the hash function you have here uh, which would transform the key to a position in the table Let's discuss what is this table position in the table, what is f, what is k. So k is definitely a key with a pair. So you have a pair, whenever we are talking about dictionary, you have a pair with key and value. So key is the one which you are going to search. So what we have to do is we need to calculate f of k, where f is the hash function, any hash functions you can select. Right now in this context, we will be using a modulo hash function in general. So other fa hash functions too we will uh, consider. Ideal hash function how exactly it looks like also we will discuss. So first thing is compute what is f of k. So once you calculate f of k, you are going to get a position using this hash function. Okay, we will discuss what should be that hash function next. So once you get a value to this, at that particular position in the table, we are going to create a table which we call it as a hash table in that table at the location provided using this function the dictionary pair will be stored at that particular location so if you want to search a pair uh, with a key value then again you have to perform f of k so when you perform f of k you're directly uh, reverting back to that location and that there you can find whether that pair exists or not directly which means one iteration within one iteration you'll get the key which you require necessary okay so that's what you have to search for a pair with k compute f of k and check whether that exists in the position in the table uh, f, uh, addressed by f of k so this position you check is it null or do you have any pair associated if you have a pair associated at that location then it is not null you have a key so if it's null then you can insert probably if uh, the operation is insert then at that particular location you can insert a dictionary okay let's see one example of uh, hash table what basically it is so here uh, let's not work about this what exactly it is we will take a simple example wherein you have f of k is equal to k minus 100 uh, what is this this is actually your hash function ideal hashing function we will consider it as f of k is equal to k minus 100 where k begins from 100 to 200 a student id we will consider that this this 100 to 200 happens to be the uh, range range of your student id and student id stands between 100 to 200 and we have uh, uh, five unique students with ids addressed as 100 and 200 and 200 and 400 100 and 200 and 400 and 599 so five students you have five different students with unique id uh, and it is in the range 100 to 200 so here what is table now what is this hash table since the range goes from 100 to 200 so you are supposed to create a table with the size of the memory as 100 because 200 100 memory locations we require 
uh, that's the range based on the range create a table with that defined range so you have table of 0 table of 1 to table of 99 so 100 memory locations you created and initially you set all this location memory location uh, created by this table all you create it as null set it as null when when it is set as null then there is no element in the dictionary that's what it says if the pointer which you have everywhere here if the pointer is point it's floating if it's floating if it's not pointing to any pair then it is null basically so here you have uh, uh, phi okay so what basically you do is you perform this function so first unique id or first key student key is 100 that says id number so you perform this f for f of 100 compute what is f of 100 so f of 100 is going to give you 100 minus 100 so 0 so it gives you a position 0 in this table so table of 0 it's actually the starting location there your key element goes there your key element goes and this 100 is actually the position for your id 100 suppose if we use the hashing function as k minus 100 and if uh, we assume that the student's id ranges from 100 to 200 it has to be modified in the same way so here what we do is at this position so uh, marked by this key you create a pointer so this 100 is a pointer now it through this pointer you create a pair through this pointer you create a pair and here you define the student uh, information so since it is a dictionary we say that uh, id and student name probably might be the uh, dictionary elements which could be stored through this pointer so this could be different this pair could be different the pair need not be 100 and student 100 and student it could be something else something else this is the key and this are the pairs dictionary pairs so at this location this lo the location is obtained using this hash function and that in turn is a pointer and through that pointer you are going to create a pair okay so, so we will assume that you have one for for uh, uh, providing the space for a dictionary pair we get one one pair space we have let's assume now we don't have more space with the thing there there is a chance that sometimes what happens um, um they the space may not be sufficient enough to store the dictionary elements so sometimes you may have to store at one position two pairs needs to be stored that situation arises let's for the time being let's not discuss that uh, each pair this uh, only one pair you can store at the location pointed by this pointer key pointer fine so here 100 102 you have so t of 1 is null pointer and then you have 102 uh, 102 it is the uh, position 2 because uh, 102 minus 100 becomes uh, 2 so 102 student 2 uh, um, information it is then student 3 information 104 student 4 information at 105 and finally at 199 uh, uh, is actually t at 99 99th position 199 is actually the key and uh, its corresponding information now uh, belongs to student 5 so this way we create a structure you call this as a tape hash table and each element is a pointer each element present in this table is a pointer which in turn creates a pair for a dictionary which in turn creates a pair for a dictionary so initially we set all this pairs to null so here t of 1 is null it is floating t of 3 is null also t of 6 to t of 98 all are null so when we look at the capacity or utilization of this hash table we can see that more number of elements are not addressed it is not addressed which means only five percent of memory is used in this case why because only five keys are there altogether you have a storage capacity of 100 so five upon 100 you have 0 0.05 so five percent of uh, the memory is used so this is not the best hash function which you can afford to select but this is also a, 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 this is actually the concept of hashing so if you want to select a best uh, hashing function what should be the uh, operator which we need to select that we will discuss in the next class so i hope uh, this is clear this is what happens um, uh, when you are working with hash now suppose say that you want to 
check whether uh, the element is present in this uh, or not what you do is given k given k you compute f of k compute f of k and uh, in that position if uh, the pointer is floating if the pointer is floating then you can say that at uh, that pos position uh, you don't have a pair for example assume 103 is actually the key which you are supposed to search so what happens you compute f of k f of k 103 minus 100 you get 3 so go to position 3 when you go to position 3 you can find it as null which means it's not pointing it is not it's floating which means you don't have a pair so you can directly judge that saying that you don't have a key associated at that position so this way in, uh, with, with one iteration itself you can compute whether a key is available or not suppose if you want to insert uh, uh, say that 103 id person's information has to be added on to this database then again compute f of k go to the location t of 3 uh, then at this location create a node uh, with the pair and say that 103 key value and student uh, 6 his information could be stuck here so this way you can insert for insert also we do not have to um, do the tedious work directly we can uh, compute f of k and uh, that location given by f of k could be uh, addressed using the hash table and this way um, more space or performance wise also it is effective also if you want to delete take a key value compute f of k uh, suppose over here uh, 102 he, uh, you have uh, information so 102 uh, you go to table uh, 2 and there you have a dictionary already associated it is not null so in that case if you were performing a erase operator or delete operator you can delete that information and you can set this to null so that's how uh, this uh, concept of uh, ideal hashing works now let's uh, uh, go back this is actually the concept wherein i have expla explained um, uh, terrible wastage of space indeed here you have terrible wastage of space 5% of memory is used and 95% of memory location is not used so by while selecting the hash function you should be a bit careful what should be the best hashing function um, in that case uh, the memory doesn't get uh, you know um, wasted utilize it uh, as much as possible okay so ne next we will discuss one simple program and this program is to convert a three character string to a long integer so why this program is essential so normally whenever you are searching for a word or a, a, um, a word in a dictionary definitely word will be a character so you will be encountering the input literally for a dictionary the input will be character so if it's a three uh, size of the character is three okay uh, three character and how do you convert that into key because here uh, hash function to make use of hash function it's better that if the key is a integer value or a long value long is um, uh, say an integer class itself but if it's long or integer then it would be better to operate upon it rather if it's a character or a string it would be difficult for us to search for that element key element so the first job is to convert a character by some means to long so here we are going to convert a character three si size of the character is three into a long and how this works let's discuss so three to long is actually a function three to long is a function and it takes string let's assume that for the time being the string which we take as an input as abc character abc is your string s is equal to abc s is a string data type string data type is available in c plus plus so first stop is to obtain what is answer long is the data type for answer long because we are indeed shifting the element by 8 bit position so you get a huge number it will not be a small number due to which we take long as the data type representation for addressing the integer number which you are gonna get so answer is equal to s dot 8 of 0 so what 8 of 0 gives since s is a string you can use now s dot operator and you can access all the elements of the string now when you are using s dot et of zero so string a b c you have a its ascii equivalent is equal to 97 if i'm taking small a b c small a ascii equivalent is 97 decimal small b decimal 98 and small c decimal 99 so first your answer becomes uh, when when this instruction is executed you get s dot et of zero s dot et of zero is um, um, the ascii value of nine uh, a, a is 97 
8 of 0 is A. Its ASCII value is 97. So long gives you answer as 97 first. So next what we do is the previous answer what you have has to be shifted by 8. So shifting it by 8 is also equal to multiplying the answer current value of answer with the 2 to the power 8 and then adding it with the next character which you have. So uh, the perform what uh, you are supposed to do is uh, uh, 2 a shift by 8 is 2 to the power 8 so multiply the answer previous content of answer is 97 97 multiplied by the 256 you get a value 24,900 uh, sorry 24,832 add 24,832 with the next characters ASCII equivalent so next character is B S dot et of 1 you have B so its ASCII equivalent is in 98 so add 24,832 with 98 you will be getting 24,930 now. So once you get uh, that number, then again uh, compute this, your current value, which is 24,930, uh, multiply it with 2 to the power 8 again, because left shifted by 8 is nothing but multiplying it with 2 to the power 8. So you get 24,930 multiplied with 256, added with uh, s dot 8 of 2, added with 99. So ultimately, the result will be equal to 63,82,179 so this will be the answer which will be returned back so ABC you give as an input and this will be the key generated so this will be the key generated and you can uh, use this unique key so any character you select you are gonna get a unique key for any string whichever you take it as a key so key if it's in the form of a string will be converted into a long using this function that is convert tree character three character to long hope uh, this program is clear and uh, next we will move on to <coughs> the hash functions some uh, terminologies uh, you have buckets uh, home bucket uh, hash function um, let's try to discuss what this bucket is so bucket is uh, suppose if you are considering a hash table we know what is hash table uh, hash table looks like this this is your hash table capacity is 100 so uh, every uh, position for this uh, key element which you are using uh, key element will be uh, associated with this position all these positions all the spaces all these memory locations from 0 to 99 you call it as buckets so that's the definition of a bucket so all position in the hash table number of buckets equals to a hash table so we will take this example the next slide this example you have uh, all together the space is 11 table capacity is 11 so all these items 0 to 10 all are buckets now what is home bucket we will discuss next so home bucket is actually when you are given with a k key value we perform f of k okay we perform f of k and once we evaluate f of k it is going to provide you with the position the position will be referred in the table uh, hash table and this you call it as home bucket so home buckets will be the position for a key a key which you use it will be operated on with the help of a hash function and its position which will be stuffed onto the table that you call it as a home bucket home bucket for for example in this case home bucket for the key value 80 is 3 the position in the table 3 is the position where the key goes and it's gets situated situated we will discuss this how would you get this so that's how we discuss uh, the home bucket hope this is clear this is for a particular key this is in general for all this is for all and this is for a particular key uh, its position in the hash table which is represented indicated by f of k function which means it depends on the k value and also it depends on f function based on that the buckets will be generated home buckets will be generated and uh, uh, here uh, there, there are two cases when you consider hash table the first case would be each bucket in the hash table so we call this as the bucket the space the space in the bucket you can think as if this is the bucket size capacity each bucket in the hash table should have a, a space or should have a capacity to store a one pair at least one pair if you're having one pair 
space to store one pair of element one pair of dictionary then it is fair fair enough if you are having more number um, not one pair probably more than one pair then you may have to create a hash table uh, wherein uh, you create a linear list you create a list for the pairs so that you call it as a hash table with the uh, um, chain of node with hashing uh, we will discuss this that wherein you create a linear list for the different pairs suppose if you are having uh, 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 10 pairs 10 pairs has to be uh, put on one single home bucket for a key you may get sometimes 10 pairs to be addressed one word might have uh, 10 different meanings so in that case you may have to create a list of uh, capacity 10 and each uh, uh, list you will store a pair so this how much it should be created that also is a problem to them so hope this is uh, clear okay uh, next uh, we will talk back talk about the next concept hash function or division hash function this is actually the hash function which is considered in general uh, more uh, often this is the uh, very important hash function um, no, ideal hash functioning uh, function is not that important whereas division hash function is very much important and the hash function goes using this formula so the key what you have uh, d is actually the divisor divisor operator or modulo operator which you are using so here the position created for a table table array is determined by using two values k and d so you take k percentage d it is going to give you a position at that position the key should go and get stored okay the position for the key is given by this formula f of k is equal to k percentage d where d is the modulo size or it is the size of the hash table it is the size of the hash table you can consider an example wherein we will uh, consider that you have three keys 80 40 and 65 let us assume that three keys we are supposed to store it onto the table so what basically we do d value the capacity of this table is 11 so d is 11 and k right now first value of k we will assume it as 80 so 80 percentage 11 you do so when you are performing 80 percentage 11 so 77 is actually the number which is very much closer to 80 so a reminder of that is 3 so at the location 3 80 will sit 80 will be stored at table of 3 location similarly second element let's assume that 40 is actually the number so what do you do 40 percentage 11 so 40 percentage 11 uh, you do you get 33 so 33 7 is the reminder 7th location 40 sets similarly you have 65 so 65 uh, the element which is very much close is 66 66 we cannot use 56 we can use Mm, sorry 55 we can use 55 is actually the number which is very much closer and reminder you get 10 so 10th location store 65 so this is how the arrangement uh, happens for a uh, division hash function now there is a problem uh, which we will discuss here now what if if uh, you get a element something like you know 58 assume you have a element to deal with 58 is actually the number 58 if it's the number 58 modulo 11 you have uh, so it uh, uses the reminder 3 but uh, in this case suppose if i want to store 55 in this table so it says that it has to be located at the position uh, addressed at 3 correct 55 uh, 58 is actually the number 58 divided by 11 you get 55 yeah, m m number and 3 is actually the reminder so third position but we see that already the element is filled so already if the element is filled and uh, if you want to insert you cannot insert and you call this concept as collision so collision is a concept wherein uh, if you are having a key uh, key unique two different keys or more than two keys gets um, a same home bucket so the position for two different keys two different keys uh, is gonna give you a same memory location you call that concept as collision so the there are many techniques to avoid collision and one of the popular method to avoid collision is linear probing 
linear searching or absolute uh, addressing method so in absolute addressing method we will discuss that in detail later time being i'll just address what needs to be done is suppose if uh, the element to be added over here is 50 we find this is the correct position but you have element filled there so in that case increment the index check the next location is it filled or not if that location is filled check the very next location check the very next location whether it is filled or not if it's not filled then add the element at that location which means here if the arrangement is three key after three key insertion we get this as the status so now the 58 the very next position is this this is the position so could we add 58 here yeah definitely we can add 58 here because this space is empty we can add an element so 58 will be stored here now what if if we have a uh, 24 so 24 24 modulo uh, 11 you get uh, 2 so 2 24 directly can go here okay now the last uh, case we will possibly see what if if the number is 35 <coughs> So 35 is the number uh, which needs to be added. So 35 when we look at 35 modulo it is 3, 35 modulo 11 it is 2 sorry it is 2. So if this is the status so 35 modulo uh, 11 becomes uh, 2. So 2 you have element go to the next location you have ele again element go again to the next location you have element 58 now this is actually the best possible location where you can stuff the element 35 so this is actually the concept of linear probing that is if you have a space if you have a space place it if not check in the array where do you have a space the nearest location check the uh, uh, element to place so here it does not keep on incrementing it you can because you can figure out when you are at this location you find that zeroth location you get uh, you can stuff the element for example here you are in this location add one to it it definitely goes ab above the boundary which is not uh, uh, correct uh, method so suppose if you are having an uh, element something like um, not 65 we will take 76 number so 76 or 74 we will take four. so in that case uh, again whenever you find 10 reminder being 10 when would you get a reminder 10 for which key suppose if the key is uh, 76 uh, 76 then the reminder will be again 10 so suppose if the key is 76 then what happens so this it shows this as the key but this is not valid so you increment so now don't go beyond so you can use now the index current index plus modulo operator you can use plus i modulo d itself so use uh, modulo operator so that it will go from last location to the first location so here you can add element 76 in this case so that's how linear probing works we will discuss that in the next slide probably uh, with uh, more in in more detail so next the uh, hash functions with the people this is discussed so this is uh, the last concept which we'll discuss collision and uh, overflow so collision uh, as addressed collision happens when two different keys would uh, occupy one home bucket two different keys occupy one uh, home bucket so how do you minimize uh, the collision so to minimize the collision as addressed you can use uh, a linear probing one of the standard algorithm used for avoiding the collision and um, uh, also you can use some uniform hash function we'll discuss about the uniform hash function what exactly it is and uh, one more concept uh, which occurs when you're dealing with hash table happens to be your overflow so overflow is a situation wherein you don't have enough capacity to uh, store your pair for example uh, we have uh, discussed here the first uh, slide here so one pair you can address there is a space for one pair what if if i want one more pair to be stored you don't have uh, actually a, a space here at this location one more pair i want uh, student uh, information has to be added uh, at this address two for two pair you don't have sufficient memory location so when you don't have sufficient memory location to for uh, store for your pair extra pair new pair when you have more number of pairs for a particular uh, home market then you get a uh, overflow so suppose if you consider uh, one uh, 
केस लाइक ओनली वन पेयर इफ इट्स अवेलेबल देन एंड कोलिजन एंड ओवरफ्लो हैपन्स एट द सेम टाइम सपोज इफ वी कंसिडर वन पेयर each if each bucket holds one pair if each uh, bucket is holding more than uh, uh, one pair if it's holding and if you are having one more pair to be added then you have a overflow so if you are having only one then in this scenario we will consider that each bucket can store only one pair okay each bucket can store only one pair of dictionary element so in that case you get collision as well as overflow at the same time okay so that's what uh, collision and uh, overflow is and how do you uh, avoid uh, uh, collision or minimize so for minimizing one solution is use a uniform hash function so what is uniform hash function let's discuss this is one of the function which is not uniform why would we call this as a non uniform uh, hash function this is not a uniform function because no matter whatever key you take no matter whatever key you take it will always return zero which means you get for uh, 10 or 100 uh, um, keys for 100 keys different keys any keys it could be you get only one value zero always so 100 uh, uh, keys will be mapped to one location one location that is the first location in the table so this is not uniform which means one location is used more often so you have uh, collision also collision is maximum at this case and uh, uh, you can reduce it to some extent by selecting a better uniform hash function so this is actually uniform hash function which was uh, discussed earlier modulo operator division operator is a uniform hash function because if we it depends on the key value and also uh, with respect to d suppose if we assume that the key elements are unique and it goes from 0 to 98 suppose if the key is going from 0 to 98 and if the d value is 11 then we can figure out that when we evaluate using k modulo we can figure out approximately nine different keys nine different keys for example 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 and 90 this nine different keys will be mapped to each bucket in the hash table so for nine each nine keys you get one home bucket similarly uh, the um, second one could be 1 11 21 31 41 till 91 for those keys you get again one home bucket similarly uh, if that is the case so approximately uh, every bucket every bucket every home bucket will have uh, like you know nine different keys it will be mapped so almost all uh, mem uh, all uh, memory locations will be used uniformly that's what uh, i just want to convince and that's what uh, you have time being we will stop here